Yo, 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 what's cracking everybody? So today I'm coming in with a real quick little tutorial on how to compress things inside a fruity limiter. Got me a nice iced black coffee on this fine Sunday morning and I'm ready to educate some foods. So let's just jump right into it. So right off the bat, I got this new beat loaded up that I've been working on lately. And the part that I wanna zoom in on is right here at track 17. So what I wanna do is I wanna add some compression to this guitar solo. So that way the louder parts of the solo get dampened down a little bit. So that way everything's a lot more even in the mix. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go over to the mixer track and you can see I have it on track 18. And I already have it loaded up with effects, so I'm just gonna move all of these down because typically you want your compression to be one of the first effects in your effect chain. So there we go, I just moved all those effects down a space and I'm just gonna put Fruity Limiter in on slot number one. Now the reason you wanna do that is because if I were to put Fruity Limiter down here after all the other effects, not only would it be compressing the guitar solo, it would also be compressing the reverb and the delay alongside all the other effects that I have on the guitar solo. And sometimes that could be what you're going for, but right now I just wanted to compress the guitar solo. I wanna leave everything else alone. So now by default, Fruity Limiter is gonna be on a limiting mode, which is essentially where you set a ceiling on the amount of loudness you want a sound to have. And if a sound's volume goes past that ceiling, it'll get pushed down. This can be an all right effect depending on the circumstance, but usually whenever I use Fruity Limiter, I'm using it to compress things, not limit them. And the main difference is just that compression gives you a bit more control over how much the sound's volume is reduced when it passes a certain threshold. So real quick, I'm gonna turn off all these other effects in the guitar solo, and I'm gonna play it without any compression on it so you can get a grasp on what the dry signal sounds like. So that is the guitar solo on its own with no compression on it, no effects at all. You can hear it's a little bit sloppy, you know, whenever you're recording a guitar into an audio interface, the audio interface is always going to pick up you just touching the other strings even when you're not playing them. But luckily, once you add a bunch of effects onto the solo, like distortion, reverbs, delays, EQs, all that, usually it becomes completely unnoticeable. So if we go back into the mixer track real quick and we open up Fruity Limiter, we can switch it to compression mode by hitting this comp button at the bottom of the plugin. So in Fruity Limiter, there's this little visual section where if I play the guitar solo, you could see the waveform pops up in the plugin. And this is super useful because then you'll be able to lower the thresholds so that way it's at around the average volume of your sound. You could see around half of the peaks are below this line and half the peaks are above this line. And that's exactly what you should be going for. So what this threshold line means is any volume that goes above this line is gonna be reduced down by the compression. So that way the entire melody that you're compressing is gonna be all at around the same volume. But you can see just by lowering the threshold on its own, nothing has happened yet. What you gotta do is you gotta up the ratio knobs so that way the compression starts working. So the ratio knob is gonna dictate how strong the compression is. And when you hover over the ratio knob and you turn it, you can see up in the upper left-hand corner of the plugin, it tells you the ratio's value. Typically, you wanna go for a ratio value of around two to one to three to one. You can go higher or lower depending on what you're compressing and how strong of a compression you want, but usually this is like the ideal range. Something you generally want to avoid is turning the ratio knob up all the way. At first, that may seem ideal because then it's like, all right, well, cool, that means everything's gonna be the exact same volume. That'd be perfect. However, this leads to your sound becoming overcompressed. And typically, it takes a pretty trained ear to tell when a sound is overcompressed, but you begin to notice it more and more the longer you've been producing, and it'll make your sounds sound pretty bad, honestly. So yeah, turning the ratio knob up all the way, something you want to avoid. I usually like keeping it at around two to one to three to one. So now I'm gonna play the solo again and you can see the compression in action. And how Fruity Limiter displays the compression working is this white line will have little peaks in it that show where the volume's being pushed down and the waveform will be turning purple. Thank you. 
So you may have noticed, it seems as if the compression did almost nothing. It sounds pretty much identical, everything is still going above the threshold, and it's barely being reduced. The biggest reason for that, that I've found, is this sustain knob being turned up to one millisecond. Now, truthfully, if I'm being 100% honest, I don't know that much about all the different knobs that the plugin has to offer. However, they do all serve a different purpose, so you can just play with these different knobs to get the sound that you're going for. Usually though, I just leave all of these unadjusted besides the sustain, ratio, and threshold. In the sustain, I just turn it down to zero. Now, there may be someone with way more producing experience than me who knows a reason why I shouldn't do this. However, to me personally, this just works. Every time I reduce the sustain down to zero and don't mess with anything else besides the threshold and the ratio, it makes the compression just work a lot better. I get stronger and more immediate volume reduction, and then the only factor going into how much the volume is being reduced is the ratio knob. It makes the whole process a lot simpler and just easy to work with. So now if I play the guitar solo, you'll probably be able to hear the difference since the sustain knob is turned down and you'll be able to visually see it inside of Fruity Limiter as well. So there you go, you can see just from that one little change turning down the sustain knob, the compression just became way more effective. And now personally, I want this compression to be a little bit stronger, so I'm gonna up the ratio to 2.5, and I'm gonna lower the threshold just a little bit. And now I'm gonna play the guitar solo with all the other effects on. However, I'm gonna have the compression off until halfway through, so that way you can see what it sounds like before and after. <laughs> So the difference there is really subtle and unless you have like a good pair of headphones on and some trained ears, you probably didn't notice it that much if I'm being honest. However, it's one of those things that really does make a difference when it comes down to the full mix of your song. On this one isolated guitar solo, it may be hard to tell the difference, but when you have other instruments playing and you have vocals involved and certain parts of an instrument are louder than others, it becomes really apparent and it sticks out in the mix. So compression is one of those things that you definitely should get familiar with, and Fruity Limiter is a free native plugin in FL Studio. It's a great way to learn how to do it. If you're starting to get really serious about producing, obviously, you know, you could go out and buy a fancy ass compressing plugin, but I mean, truthfully, I've never had a reason to. However, I have only been producing for four years and I did just begin school for music and audio recording. So I'm sure within the next few years, I would learn the reason why certain compressors are priced much higher than others. However, up until this point, I have had no reason whatsoever to go drop $100, $200 on a fancy compressor when I have a free one right here in FL Studio. So yeah, overall, that's how you use Fruity Limiter to compress things. You can use this on vocals, on instruments, melodies, like literally anything. So I hope you took some useful information away from this video. Compression, super useful tool to have in the tool belt. And it's just another one of those tips that you can use to make your own music sound better. Leave a like if you'd like, and I will catch you next time. Foo.